Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three and a half year old named Kylie and I also have a 21 month old named Mia. And in today's video, we are going to be chatting all about babies. I know that many new Montessori parents out there are very easily overwhelmed with the amount of information that there is to sort through about how to raise a child the Montessori way. And I have some really good news for you. As far as all of the parenting philosophies go, I 100% believe that Montessori is one of the easiest, most relaxed styles that exist. And in a Montessori environment for a newborn, it is probably as simple as it gets. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to be sharing with you all about how to prepare for a newborn in your Montessori home. When you're trying to prepare your home environment for the arrival of a newborn baby, and you're trying to do it with Montessori philosophies in mind, there are three major categories that come to mind, at least for me. The first is baby essentials. The second is your child's sleeping space. And the third is the baby's movement area. So let's start off with all of those baby essentials that you might need in a Montessori home with a newborn. Now, I remember as a first time parent, and I'm sure many of you can commiserate, it almost seems like the list of things that your baby needs just seems to go on and on and on, either when you're registering for items for a baby shower or when you're out actually purchasing things for yourself for the first time, it's a little bit overwhelming. But I am here to reassure you that newborn babies don't really need a whole lot of anything at all. For those first three months, which is typically dubbed the fourth trimester, your baby does a whole lot of eating and sleeping, and that is just about it. And fortunately, the Montessori approach tends to be very minimalistic in nature anyway, so these two things kind of go hand in hand, and that means that your list of baby essentials as a Montessori parent is going to be incredibly small compared to what you might see elsewhere. So here we go. The only three things that are really, truly essentials that you need to make sure you provide for your newborn in those first couple of months are first, obviously feeding essentials. Your baby has to eat. The second is to make sure that you're dressing your baby in loose, comfortable clothing that's breathable, that's easy for your baby to stretch out and to move around in so that they are not constricted in their movement in any way. And third, they need interaction and closeness with you punctuated by short periods of independent play and just quiet time for observation. And this might be in their movement area, which we're going to discuss shortly, but it also might be just in another room of the house that maybe you're doing some chores in. It might be outside on a blanket if the weather is nice. It might be on a walk with you. Any time that you can offer your baby to just quietly observe and take in all of that sensory input from the environment is going to be so crucial to their development. And really, those three things are what's going to get you through the majority of your day, every single day with a newborn. But of course, newborns sleep a whole lot, so during those few times when they're not sleeping on you, which is very likely, then they have to have some kind of a place to sleep. And that's actually the next section. So let's talk a little bit now about what a sleeping space for a newborn would ideally look like in a Montessori home. So first things first, a Montessori sleeping space for a newborn does not have to be in their own room. In fact, many families choose to follow medical advice and co-sleep in the same room with their newborn for at least the first couple of months of life. So your baby's setup can be in your room, it can be in their own room, it could be whatever your home setup happens to be and what works for your family. There are no rules around that. But what you do need to consider is that a Montessori sleeping space emphasizes that it's a place of rest. So it should be very minimal, it should be beautiful, and it should be calming. And after all, it is supposed to be a place that your newborn is hopefully getting some healthy sleep. So you don't want to turn it into an entertainment area if at all possible. So the elements that you actually want to include in your newborn sleeping space are very minimal. Obviously they need a place to sleep. So this might be a floor bed if you choose to use a floor bed from day one and some Montessori families do, but you also might feel more comfortable having your very young newborn in a bassinet for the first couple of weeks or months of life before you transition them to a floor bed. You also want to have a designated changing area for your baby. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be an actual changing table 
table, but it could also just be a changing pad on top of an existing dresser with a little basket of all of your essentials next to it. Whatever works for you is going to work for your baby because they will be none the wiser. You might also want to consider having a really comfortable chair somewhere in that room for you to sit in while you're feeding the baby because not only will there be a lot of really late nights that you find yourself in that chair and you're going to want to be comfortable, but also sometimes even during the day, it's nice to just have a place to get away from the hustle and bustle of what's going on to a quieter place that's maybe a little bit more dimly lit so that your baby can focus on getting nutrition and bonding with you at the same time away from the distraction of normal everyday life. And although a newborn's sight is very limited at birth, their vision does improve very quickly over those first couple of months. So it might be worth it to, ahead of time, put up some really nice high quality artwork low down at your infant's level, wherever it is that they can see in the room. So maybe near the changing table area or low down next to their floor bed or their bassinet. This way they've got a little touch of beauty in their room that's at their level that they can actually see. And you don't have to go crazy with it either. Just a couple, one or two, maybe even three if it's a larger area, pieces of artwork would be perfectly fine. And of course there are other elements that you might consider adding to your newborn sleeping space that are not specifically related to Montessori, but you might find helpful. Things like blackout curtains and a noise machine are just two examples that come to my mind because I used them and I thought they were incredibly helpful. So you can do some research on some of those things, but again, know that they don't really have anything to do with the Montessori perspective. All right, so your newborn is going to be doing a whole lot of sleeping, a whole lot of eating, but there are going to be times throughout the day where they are awake. And so in a Montessori home, we typically set up something called a movement area for our newborns. And that's the place that they might spend some time hanging out by themselves, getting a little bit of independent playtime in during those times where they're not directly interacting with us face to face. And as we all know, that independent play is incredibly crucial to establish right from the beginning so that it's normal for your baby and it isn't quite such a tough transition as they get older. So really quickly, before we dive into the specifics of what should be included in a Montessori newborn's movement area, I want to be sure that we're clear on the things that should not be present because there's some pretty big ones. First is to avoid all of the baby holding devices that often take up a lot of space anyway throughout our home. So it's nice to have a reason not to have them. And I'm talking about things that you would put your baby in when you're not holding them so that they have something to entertain them or it's propping them up so that they can see. And for a newborn, that might include things like the infant seats and bouncers that you so commonly see or baby swings. And just as a little side note, in case you're totally new to Montessori, this whole idea about avoiding baby holding devices actually applies to all of the other devices that may come down the line as your baby gets older. Things like the extra saucers and the walkers and the jumpers and the bumbo seats and all of the things that are out there on the market. And the reason for that is because you want your child to have the freedom to move their bodies, which I go into a lot of detail on the specifics of why in another video, which I will link down below for you in case you're interested in checking it out. You also want to avoid any battery operated toys with buttons and flashy lights and things like that for two reasons. The first is that they're not aligned with Montessori values in general. And the reason for that is because those kinds of toys promote um, passive entertainment as opposed to active thinking and imagination on your child's part. And then the other reason is because a newborn is not developmentally ready for toys like that anyway, and it tends to be very overstimulating for them. And then along those lines of making sure that we're not overstimulating our newborn, we want to make sure that the movement area is equally clean and organized, just like the sleeping space would be. We want to avoid a lot of that super colorful, overstimulating visual clutter in your child's movement area. Instead, you really want to aim for a more neutral or at least toned down color palette and keeping very few things out so that 
everything just kind of looks clean and simple and organized at all times. Having a space that is not very cluttered, not only does it provide more space for your baby to move about and explore that freedom of movement that I was talking about earlier, but also it helps your baby to learn how to focus and concentrate better. Because when there's too much going on, it's like stimulus overload inside their brains and they don't know like what to focus on. So if they have just a few things to look at and to really take in sensory input from, then they're going to be engaging in longer periods of focus and concentration from the very beginning, which is what we want. Okay, so now that you're clear on the things that you do not want to have in your newborn's movement area, let's talk about the things that you do want to make sure that you include. And again, this list is very small. So if your baby is not spending time in any one of the baby holding devices and you're not holding your baby, then where are you supposed to put them? Well, the answer is pretty easy, on the floor. And although it might scare you as a new parent, I want to reassure you that there's nothing wrong with putting your newborn child on the floor, so long as it's clean and it has a little bit of padding so that they don't hurt themselves. So if you have a space that is carpeted, then that makes things a lot easier. But if you have a hardwood floor or a tile floor or any kind of hard surface, that's okay too. There are things that you can do. A lot of Montessori families will put down a soft mat or some type of like a really thin futon or a really thick quilt or a blanket that's really soft or a Montessori tappuccino. If you have never heard of a tappuccino before, then let me tell you, it's pretty awesome. It's basically like the Montessori version of your child's very first lovey or a blankie. A tappuccino is typically included in a traditional Montessori newborn setting. And the idea behind it is that not only is it soft and comfortable for your newborn, but it's the one place that they can count on for consistency because it always feels the same, it always smells the same, it always looks the same, and so it's comforting. It provides your newborn with a sense of security. So what do you use a tappuccino for? It's a nice soft place for your newborn to lay while they're awake, but it can also double as a nice cozy place to sleep. And it can also serve as the thing that's underneath your newborn when you're kind of passing them off to somebody else to hold. And it provides a little bit of extra cushioning and security maybe for a younger sibling who is new to holding a newborn that they can kind of use to help cradle them in their arms as they learn. And if you're a first time parent, you may not be aware of this yet, but there will come a day when your newborn child is sleeping blissfully in your arms and you have to set them down somewhere else. And you do not want them to wake up because it took them forever to fall asleep. And so typically what happens for many babies is that as soon as you set them down, wherever it is that you're trying to set them down, that change in temperature from your warm arms to the much colder sleeping surface, it wakes them up. Their little eyes just pop right open and then they start crying and it's like this vicious cycle, especially when it's happening in the middle of the night. And it's basically every new parent's nightmare. You don't like being in that situation. So what's great about a tappuccino is that if you're using it to hold your newborn, which is what it's designed for, but then you need to set them down somewhere else, then they're maintaining that warmth that they had from you holding them in their tappuccino. And so when you set them down, they're a lot less likely to wake up. And a tappuccino doesn't just have to be for the newborn stage. Again, it's like your child's first lovey, so this could most certainly be something that your child is accustomed to sleeping on and laying and hanging out on during their movement time for many months to come. So if the idea of using a Montessori tappuccino with your newborn sounds pretty fantastic, then prepare to get even more excited because I've actually partnered with the tappuccino company to offer one lucky winner a giveaway of one of their gorgeous, very high quality, luxuriously soft Montessori tappuccinos for your newborn. So if you are interested in learning how to win one, then be sure to head over to my Instagram at half a family vlog, where I am hosting the giveaway in partnership with the Tappuccino company. The giveaway is open between December 17th of 2020, which is when this video is posted, all the way through December 20th of 2020. So head over to Instagram for all of the official contest rules and to get your entry in. Next up on your list of essentials for a Montessori movement area for your newborn would be a low mirror that is basically at floor level for your newborn to be able to see themselves and to see their environment. And the idea 
behind using a mirror is that your baby can actually take in more of their environment. Because if you think about it, when they're low to the ground and they're just kind of hanging out, they can't really see a whole lot of the room the way that we can up as high as we are. And so their mental map of what their home looks like is a little bit more limited than ours. But if you can provide them with a mirror, then they have more angles to view from and they can see things coming from behind them so maybe that they're not surprised by something that they weren't expecting. And it's interesting for them to look at their own faces and to kind of observe their own jerky body movements in the mirror. I can tell you from personal experience that both of my girls spent a lot of time investigating themselves and kind of looking about the room in the mirror. So this is definitely something that you don't want to skip. Now, as far as the kind of mirror, honestly, you can use any type of mirror that you would like normally hang vertically, one of the big long ones. Those you can just turn on their sides and set them down like up against a wall next to your baby's movement area, or you can even mount them to the wall for extra safety. But you really can use any mirror, like you can even use a real glass mirror, so long as you're there supervising and your baby isn't being left unattended. Again, they don't move around a whole lot in the newborn phase anyway, but you don't want to be caught in a situation either where they have suddenly learned how to start scooting themselves and then something happens with the mirror. So what you can do instead, if you don't already have a mirror somewhere in your home that you can use for this purpose, what you can do is purchase an acrylic mirror. And these are mirrors that are shatterproof. They're designed for use with children. So if you're going to go out and buy a mirror just for this purpose, then I would suggest investing in the acrylic mirror. This way it will last you for many years and many children potentially to come. So I will put links in the description box down below to a couple of options that I know of that tend to be pretty popular with Montessori families. Another classic essential that you will find in Montessori movement areas for newborns are the Montessori visual mobiles. They're actually a set of mobiles and they go in a very specific sequence of when they are introduced. The first is the Munari Mobile, which is a high contrast black and white mobile that caters to the youngest of newborns visual capacity. But it's then followed a couple of weeks later by the octahedron mobile, which is a series of three octahedrons that are made in this like metallic -y paper that reflect light in the three primary colors. After that is the Gobi mobile, which is a series of five spheres that are oriented at a 45 degree angle from the same rod. And they vary by shade of color with the darkest at the bottom to the lightest at the top. And the last one is the dancer's mobile, which is a series of stylized human and figures that are typically created out of holographic paper so that they reflect the light. And they encourage a newborn to not only focus on the colors, but also the movement and that idea of the human figure. So if you were to introduce all four of those mobiles at varying times in your newborn's movement area, then you would want to make sure that you do them in that sequence. And there are actually very specific age ranges where they should be introduced because each of the mobiles caters to a different capacity of your child's developing vision. Now I'm often asked about how to go about hanging the Montessori mobiles. And you have a couple of different options available to you. The first one would be if you have a wooden baby gym of some kind that's tall enough, then you can suspend the mobile from the underside of the baby gym and then place your baby under that and problem solved. Another option is if you have a pickler triangle in your home. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will pop a picture up right here. This is an item for gross motor movement that you will often find in many Montessori homes for toddlers and preschoolers. But if you do happen to have a pickler triangle because maybe you already have a toddler or a preschooler in the house, then I have also heard of people suspending their Montessori baby mobiles from the underside of the pickler triangle. And then a third option for you, and this is personally what our family did and it worked out just fine, was to install one of those little hook and eye fixtures, like the hardware pieces, just the eye part, because it has like a screw on one side, to screw it into the ceiling and then actually hang the mobile from that on a really long length of string. And then whenever we wanted to change out the mobile, then we would just untie it or cut it off and then switch it out for the next mobile. And it was super simple. Now, whatever fixture you decide to actually hang your baby's mobiles from, you want to make sure that you're suspending them about 12 inches or about 30 centimeters from your baby's like chest and face region. So it shouldn't be super close that it's like in their face and it shouldn't be so far away that they can't 
see it because a newborn, their typical visual distance, like the capacity that they can actually see when they're born is about that length. It's about the distance from their face to your face when you're holding them. So again, that's roughly about 12 inches, about one foot or 30 centimeters, depending on what country you live in, um, above your baby's face and chest region from the bottom of the mobile. These mobiles can absolutely be purchased online if you're interested in buying a set of them or even just one or two of them for your newborn. And I will put links in the description box down below to some of those options that I've found. But if you are more the crafty type and you like a good DIY project, then you'll be happy to know that you can absolutely DIY these mobiles yourself as well. And I actually tried my hand at it with my second child. I didn't do the fourth one, but I did do the first three of them. And I made video tutorials for all three on how to actually make them, all the materials, the templates, everything you need to make them on your own. So if you're interested in trying that out as a fun little side project for yourself before baby arrives, then I will put links to each of those tutorial videos in the description box down below for you to check out. Something else that's super easy to add to your baby's Montessori movement area are a series of high contrast black and white cards. This is something super simple that you can pull out during your baby's tummy time, for example, so that they have something to focus on that they can actually see given their visual capacity that will help to hold their focus and their concentration. Another fun way to use high contrast cards is to actually put them up near your baby's changing area so that when you're changing their diaper or you're changing their clothes, I mean, they spend a lot of time there as newborns anyway, they have something to look at and something to focus on and engage that concentration. So again, you can buy sets of these cards all over the place, but you can also print them out for free online, which is what I did. So I will put links to a couple of those options as well in the description box down below for you. And finally, when you're considering whether or not to add toys to your child's movement area, you have to remember that as a newborn, they really aren't doing a whole lot yet. They haven't even really developed the ability to like reach out and actually successfully grab things yet. That doesn't come till usually after the three month mark and sometimes even into about four months. The only thing they really can do other than look around at things and kind of stretch and move their bodies is they have something called a grasping reflex. So what that is, is if you touch the palm of their hand, either with your finger or with an object, they will automatically have this reflex where they close their fingers around it. And I know that it's super cute the first time you do that with your finger on your baby's palm, they're holding your finger, they're, they're, they're tiny little hand, I can never get enough of it. But you can also make use of that grasping reflex to help them develop their hand muscles from very early on if you offer them something like a Montessori newborn rattle. And some of them actually have little bells, some of them have a series of wooden rings, but the idea is that they're not purposely grabbing it and shaking it around, it's more of a reflex thing. They feel it touch their hand, they close their hand, and it's small enough for them to keep a grip on it, and then as they're moving their arms and their legs about, just kind of jerkily, they're hearing the bell or they're hearing the little wooden rings clink together. So this could be your child's very first Montessori toy if that is something that you choose to add. And then you might also consider a set of Montessori interlocking discs, which are just two little wooden discs that fit together at a perpendicular angle. You can offer them to your baby. They're small enough for that grasping reflex and they can hold on to them. And then after a couple of months when they learn how to bring objects to their mouth, then they can use them as a wooden teether. They can also use them for a hand-to-hand -hand transfer once they start learning how to do that. And then down the line even further, when they start learning how to crawl, they kind of wobble about on the floor if you roll them and it provides a motivation for your child to crawl after them. If you're interested in learning more about the other kinds of activities that you can do with a newborn in a Montessori home, I actually have an entire video that I've already done in the past dedicated to that. So definitely go check that one out after you're done watching this one and I will leave a link to it in the description box down below. So those are my tips for helping you prepare the environment for a newborn in your Montessori home. If you have anything to add to the discussion, please feel free to share that with us in the comments down below. And if you are interested in learning more about how to implement Montessori with your child from birth to age three, I actually have an entire e-course that walks you through it step by step. So I'll leave a link in the description box down below to that in case you're interested in checking it out. 
And just in case you're new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for doing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.